something I guess I just live by is I'm satisfied with never being satisfied. And that sounds like a very unsatisfying thing to say, but I just want to be able to educate. And if I can pass that on to future generations, I think our odds are better of, of sustaining what we have long term. Because if we don't, what does the future look like? thing about the company is it was definitely designed to help deer hunters. And then my eyes were open to the bigger picture where we're helping all wildlife thrive. And it wasn't the goal at the beginning, but it's, it's, it was a snowball effect of things using the proper management practices to create habitat and do these things. And next thing I knew, all sorts of wildlife could flourish on these properties. It wasn't just about deer. My name is Brett Smith, and I own a company called Whitetail Land Management Services, which is a habitat management company. Here's Brett's first deer you got. First buck. First buck. Fat pointer. 12 years old. I remember that. You were only out in the woods, I think, I don't know, he was only out there maybe an hour or so, right? Not that yeah, long? Hour and he it. got yeah. it? It all started when I was a kid. Uh, my dad was obviously a really big hunter and at like the age of three years old, he ended up taking me to northern Wisconsin um, to go to, to, to his hunting camp. What I did is I set a stand up. I made sure he was the same height I was and had a sleeping bag and his Game Boy and snacks for him, so he enjoyed it, and and that's where it all started off from that time. I would definitely say my dad is is my main influence. If he would never been interested in hunting, I really don't know that I would ever have this passion. I was in college and. Uh, just getting super sick, didn't know what was going on. Had to come home for a couple weeks and just spent time on the couch with my parents and my family. And finally one night to my dad, I said, Dad, we gotta go to the hospital. We, we gotta go to the ER, something's not right. Like, every, I was in so much pain, I couldn't breathe. Like, started throwing up when we got to the hospital. And they looked down at me and they said, how long have you had this rash? And I said, what rash? And my entire body was covered with these bullseyes. They didn't know what was going on and they said, we're gonna test you for, for Lyme disease and if it comes back positive, You've had it for months. I remember talking to like friends of my mom's <clears throat> um, that lived down the road to us. Year, years later, he was like, yeah, it sounds like you got sick over the past couple of years pretty bad. And I was like, yeah, I, I played it off, tried to be a tough guy, but yeah, and my mom, he's like, yeah, your mom said she didn't know if you were gonna make it. And then like. We were worried that this would put an end to Whitetail Land Management Services because if he can't really function to do the job he needs to do because it just affects him that bad, we were worried that that would kind of put an end to it. So it was scary. It was kind of heartbreaking because it was like, well, he put all this hard work in and what if he can't do it? And I think there was times where maybe she even was a little bit worried, but Brittany knew it was something that I always wanted to do. She always believed in me more than I ever believed in myself. I'll never be able to thank her enough for that because now, now I'm living my dream. Now if they just sneak out of that bedding area right there, really we have a food source on the edge of another food source, makes this area way more attractive. Some of the habitat management practices that we use just to improve habitat, I mean we're using minimal tillage or no tillage planting methods, putting down seed and not disrupting a bunch of soil. Conventional farming a lot of times disrupts a lot of that. If we use minimal tillage options, we're, we're helping all the insects to, to deer and everything in between. These habitat management practices are gonna benefit all wildlife, really. My buddy Caden and I have been friends since forever. And the nice thing is that he's owned a local property for years that was always kind of our testing ground. The older we got, the more ideas we bounced off each other, trying this, trying that. I was used to going out and seeing maybe one, two deer, some turkeys, and now if I go out and don't see five, six, I know something's not right. I didn't know that the business was gonna turn into this. My goal as a hunter, I understood things. I had a background in it and, and I decided I just wanted to help hunters. And then the bigger picture opened up my eyes and I was like, I'm doing more here than just helping somebody bring whitetails to their property. We're doing bigger things here. We're creating habitat so that these animals can, can be and thrive. This place will be dynamite for southwest winds all day long. That wind will be blown back here, so we could plant sorghum, or long term we could do maybe some switchgrass all the way up to the base of that stand okay. to get you in and out. Because the thing about those tree stand locations is they're only as good as many times as you can get in and out. 
The biggest motivation to hire Brett was to make sure that we didn't make a bad decision. So you're not gonna know that you made a bad decision until after it's done, and then uh, it's gonna take forever in order for that bad decision to uh, rewrite itself. So not only does he care about it, he has a, a good, both scientific knowledge and strategic knowledge to really help you kind of tie it together. You can do a lot of work and reading on your own, but uh, he brings another level of knowledge to the table. I've had the opportunity to help so many property owners from the Dakotas, Nebraska, all the way out to Ohio, Tennessee. I've, I've covered all these states, ultimately to help hunters, but to help wildlife. I can leave knowing in the back of my mind, we're doing the right things here. Wildlife's gonna flourish because of the decisions that we're making. You always want your kids to do the best that they can, and I feel Brett is doing that. He created this himself. That's the thing is what's, what makes it so outstanding and makes you proud of them and that. He's done amazing things so far, but he doesn't want to just settle with where he is at in his business. He just wants to keep going to the next level and very proud of him for all that. When I think of living the land, I think of myself waking up on a cool November morning. I can see my breath rising, watching squirrels run through the leaves, deer walk through. And at that point, as a hunter, it's not even about the hunt anymore or the harvest or anything like that. It's just being a fly on the wall and, and being able to experience wildlife. To my role as a habitat manager, conservationist, to take care of what we have. Yeah, I'm always gonna wanna try to achieve more to help, to help wildlife, to help the ecosystem, to help hunters, to help people, to help everybody. I don't think I can ever be done helping. So I'm okay with being satisfied, never being satisfied.